Welcome to Tech Programming CSIT. Very good evening to all our viewers for joining with us. You all have connected with us through our YouTube channel. So welcome to today's session. In today's session we will talk about financial literacy and numeracy. First of all we will see the basic financial concepts. What do you mean by barter system? What is the difference between needs and wants? How does trade evolved in the world? Next we will see the different modes of digital payments. What is the difference between financial literacy and numeracy? We will see some examples of financial literacy. Why financial literacy is important for students? Financial literacy refers to the knowledge and understanding of various financial products. It helps people manage their money, personal finances, investment and tax planning. Its primary purpose is to safeguard the individuals from financial frauds and scams. Financial literacy is a possession of skills, knowledge and behaviors that allow an individual to make an informed decisions regarding money. Now let us see the role of financial literacy and numeracy for students. Financial literacy is the ability to understand and manage personal finances such as budgeting, saving, investing, borrowing and protecting against risk. Numeracy is the ability to use mathematical skills and reasoning to solve problems and make decisions in everyday life such as calculating interest rate, comparing prices, interpreting data, graphs, etc. Financial literacy and numeracy are closely related and mutually reinforcing. Both are essential tools, essential for students to achieve their educational, career and life goals. Now let us see how financial literacy and numeracy can help students. So, it can develop critical thinking and problem solving skills that are applicable across various domains and contexts. Second point is to enhance their confidence dealing with financial matters and challenges. Next point is to avoid financial pitfalls and scams that can undermine their financial well-being and security. Next is to plan ahead and set realistic and achievable financial goals for themselves and their future. To make an informed and responsible financial choices that align with their values and priorities. Financial literacy and numeracy can be taught and learned through formal education, informal learning, experiential learning and self-directed learning. Students can benefit from a variety of resources, tools, activities and support systems that can help them to improve their financial literacy and numeracy skills. So let us see what is the difference between financial literacy and numeracy. Financial literacy and numeracy are both important skills for managing personal finances and making informed decisions in everyday life. However, they are not exactly the same. Financial literacy is the ability to understand and manage personal finances, whereas numeracy is the ability to use mathematical skills and reasoning to solve problems and make decisions in everyday life, such as calculating interest rate, comparing prices, interpreting data and graphs, etc. It involves applying mathematical concepts and methods to real-world situations. Both are essential for students to achieve their educational, career and life goals. Financial literacy requires numeracy skills and numeracy skills can be enhanced by financial literacy knowledge. Now let us see some of the examples of financial literacy. First is creating and following a personal budget that tracks income and expenses and helps to achieve financial goals. Next is saving money regularly and building an emergency fund that can cover unexpected cost or emergencies. Next example is investing money wisely and diversifying the portfolio to reduce risk and increase returns. Next example is borrowing money responsibly and paying off debts on time while avoiding high interest rate rates and fees. Next example is protecting personal finances from frauds, identity theft, scams and other risks by using secure passwords, checking credit reports, reviewing bank statements, etc. Now let us see how financial literacy is important for students. Financial literacy is important for students because it helps them to develop life skills that will benefit them in the future such as making informed and responsible financial decisions that align with their goals and values. Next point is avoiding or minimizing debt, frauds and financial stress that can negatively impact their well-being and academic performance. Next point is building wealth and achieving financial independence and security. Next is contributing to the economic and social development of their communities and society. Next point is financial literacy is also important for students because it prepares them for challenges and opportunities of the 21st century such as navigating a complex 
and dynamic financial system that offers a variety of products and services. Next is adapting to the changing economic conditions and labor markets that require flexibility and resilience. Next is leveraging technology and innovation to access and use financial information and tools. Last but not the least, to engage in global citizenship and sustainability issues that affect their financial and environmental future. Now let us see what is the difference between needs and wants. Needs are the essential requirements in our life such as food, clothes and house. On the other hand, wants are the things you require to enhance the quality of your life such as games, music and TVs. Let us see an example. When you feel hungry, you need food to satisfy your hunger. Therefore, food is our need. However, when you visit the market with your father and you feel tempted to have an ice cream, in this situation, ice cream is not your need. However, it is your want. So what is money? What do you mean by money? Money is a recognized medium of exchange in the economy. It is an asset that can be stored and used in a form of currency or as value. It allows you to buy the things you require, right from the basic things such as bread to any high value products such as car. In our country, money is used in the form of Indian currency known as rupee. You would have surely have used rupees when you buy food from canteen. Now let us see what do you mean by barter system. So let us go back to the history. Humans have been transactioning in goods much before money was invented. Have you ever wondered how these transactions took place? The answer is barter system. To understand the barter system in a simple way, consider this example. So suppose there are two people. Satya has two bags of wheat at his home. However, he needs only one of them for his monthly consumption. On the other hand, Ahmad has two bags of rice, out of which he is able to spare one. So they meet and decided to exchange the bag of wheat with that of rice. After the barter exchange, Satya and Ahmad both have one bag of rice and wheat, each to match their requirements of food. Have you ever performed a simple barter exchange with your friends or cousin? For example, you have a pack of sketch pens that you do not need and you exchange the same for a geometry box. Evolution of Trade Let us see how the evolution of trade took place. Trade is a financial activity that includes buying and selling various goods and services between two or more people involved in the transaction. Trade can happen between organizations and countries as well. For example, India primarily exports products such as rice and jewelry and imports petroleum and electronic components. The evolution of trade across the countries has been closely linked with the development of the money system. You would be surprised to know that trade across continents have been prevalent in our world even in ancient times. While ancient trade was based on the barter system, there is also evidence of commodities being used in the form of livestock, salt, metal, rare stones. Pottery traditions were popular in parts of the world such as Japan, Korea, China, Mexico and many more. Various kinds of merchandise travelled across the Silk Road making it one of the oldest routes of international trade in the world. Spices from India came in demand across the world and were the main exports to the western world. The spice trade led to new diplomatic relationships between east and west. It was partially with the spice trade in mind that Christopher set out in 1492 and discovered America. Spices from India came in demand across the world and were the main exports to the west. Pottery traditions were popular in parts of the world such as Japan, Korea, China, Mexico and many more. The Han dynasty who ruled China opened the Silk Road trade route between China and Central Asia. Various kinds of merchandise travelled along the Silk Road, Silk Road making it one of the oldest routes of international trade in the world. I hope you like this video. Do give your valuable suggestions and write in the comment box on which topic you want us to make video. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video.